Shalom. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kudash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone because those are the men who I learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem El Shai. Yahweh is the true name of the God of Israel. Yahweh Shai is who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his one and only true name is Yahweh Shai. And um, pretty much I have this clip I want to share. And um, pretty much the reason why I'm doing this video is because this is how the average so-called um, black man thinks. All right. You know, they got this mindset that we need to take our resources and our finances and go to Africa. Like if you're going to escape the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28. All right. So. Pretty much, you know, this individual that I'm getting ready to show you, he knows that he's an Israelite. He knows all about the Hebrew Israelites. You know, he's seen interviews with Nate. I think he did like um videos on that. You know, Nate of the IUIC. He goes by the name of um Bishop Nate. And um this individual, he knows he's an Israelite, but like Ezekiel the thirty seven chapter says, there's no breath in him. There's no faith. He don't have the, the spirit of life. He know he's an Israelite, but he doesn't have faith upon Yahweh Shai. That's why you hear particular Israelite um, men and women that, you know, they want to flee America. If they understood the scriptures, they will understand that Yahweh Shai is our savior and he's going to deliver us from America. All right. By the way of the so-called UFOs. So I'm going to let him speak. And, um, you know, I got a, a Bible lesson prepared. So check this out. The system that is in place that we embrace, that we metamorphosize into, our children's turn gay, our men and women love one another, the school system is out of control, the, 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 the opportunities for business starting, home owning, still is plummeting in numbers. They say that the wealth gap between blacks and whites have spread further apart. The stats can't lie. And yet you sit there and you watch stats, the statistical data, and think everything is okay. That you would rather put your head in the sand and ignore the fact while you watch your family plummet into poverty and then all the while watch immigrants come in and take your place. That is a dereliction of duty on your part. Of being all right, so he said all that, which, you know, there's some truth to that, you know, concerning how the system was established, you know, it's built upon Edomite supremacy and the Edomites, the so-called white man in sea line, right? The central bankers are Edomites, these J-E-W-S's, you know, they're um, Edomites, right? But when you go to this individual's channel, right, look, the most popular video he has about the Russians showing the Russian icons, right? But then, look. He made a video two years ago why you should not go to Africa. Stop. Don't go back to Africa. So this individual is double-minded. All right? So uh, I'm just doing this video for edification. This is um, Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 14. It says, For here have we, the we applies to who? The nation of Israel, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, which is the seed line of Jacob. Right? No continuing city. Because we was exiled out of our land. First beginning with the northern kingdom. They went to captivity under the Assyrians. Before they came to Asherif. Which is the western hemisphere. Right? And then shortly after that. The southern kingdom. We was being wicked. And the Most High. He allowed the Babylonians to take us down. And we went into captivity under the Babylonians. Alright? So we don't have no continuing city. You got our people. You know, they went back to the land of Israel under this guy named um, ben Amin, and they catch an absolute hell over there. You know, they got to join, you know, the, um, the Israeli army. They go through racial discrimination. Now, why is that? They left America. Shouldn't their lives be sweet? You know, they know that they're Israel. They, they back in the homeland. Why are they catching hell? Because they still under the curses of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Whether you're in America or any part of the world, you're going to catch hell as a Hebrew Israelite. Why? Because we broke the old covenant, which is the law, statutes, and commandments. 
So when you return back sorrowful in the form of repenting to Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, you got to acknowledge that. You got to acknowledge that you can't deliver yourself. Nobody can deliver you. Who's going to deliver us? Yahweh Shai. He's our savior. He's our mediator. He's our high priest. We need Yahweh Shai. All right? So continuing on, it says, for here have we no continuing city. We don't have no continuing city. You read Micah, the second chapter in the 10th verse, it tells you that this place is greatly polluted. Who polluted this place? The Edomites, the so-called white man in Ceylon, along with the other heathen nations. Their job is to oppress us, all right? When we went into captivity and we went into all these different um, slave trades, the most high allowed that to happen. Why? Because that's what's prophesied in the scriptures for our disobedience, right? So we don't have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. In the form of faith and hope, which is going to become a reality when Yahweh Shah returns back. All right? So that's what our people need to understand. You know that you're an Israelite. You need to have faith upon Yahweh Shah. It's Yahweh Shah that's going to bring us back to our land. When you read Isaiah the 14th chapter, first three verses. All right? So you have to build up your faith. You know, watch great millstone um, videos. You know, watch my channel. But before watching my channel... Go in the description and subscribe to them channels, as well as other brothers of Great Millstone. All right? Let's read this. It's all about having faith. Faith is going to lead to salvation. Salvation is literal. All right? It's a physical thing that's going to happen. But only the elect of the nation of Israel is going to be delivered. Only the elect of the nation of Israel have the gift of faith. Just because you know you're an Israelite, that's, that's half the battle. That's like a quarter of the battle. This is Deuteronomy chapter 29 and verse 25. It says then, and this is one of my favorite scriptures, right? From 25 on down. Deuteronomy 29 and 25. It says, then men shall say, matter of fact, 24. It says, um, even all nations, the heathen nations shall say, wherefore have the Lord, whenever you see the word Lord in caps, it's the God of Israel, Yahweh. All right, that's his one and only true name. It says, done this unto this land. Talking about the land of Israel. The land of Israel is divided amongst the heathen nations. You have the Edomites there. You have the Arabs there. All right, you got all kind of people that's in our land. And our land is bigger than that little strip of land that the Zion has created. All right, read the scriptures. Our land is huge. It says, continuing on, it says, what meaneth the heat of this great anger? That, that land is not a land flowing with milk and honey. That's how you know that them Edomite converts over there, as well as, as, well as those um, Arabs and the other heathen nations, that they're not the chosen people. King David is not over there. Yehoshua is not over there. All right? The elect of the nation of Israel is not over there. That's not the kingdom of heaven. All right? There's still prophecies that have to take place before Yehoshua comes back, like Jacob's trouble. Like the hour of temptation, the time period where they make the mark of the beast mandatory throughout all countries. And then shortly after that, the destruction of Babylon the Great, which is America. And the same time the destruction is about to happen, Yahabashai is going to deliver us by the way of the so-called UFOs. You got to believe in that. That's, that's the only hope we have. But you got these Christians, they scared. They don't want World War III to happen. You know, they don't want... The destruction of Babylon the Great to happen. They actually pray for this, this land. Absolutely crazy. It says, then men shall say, because they, who's the day? The nation of Israel, so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native American Indians. It says, have forsaken the covenant of the Lord God of their fathers. Yahweh, you know, God of our fathers. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, you know, the prophets, right? So that's what happened to our people. That's why the curses of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, is upon the sea line of Jacob. It says, which he made with them when he brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. The covenants was only made with the nation of Israel only. All right. It wasn't made with the heathen nations. So they don't need salvation. The, the blood and sacrifice of Yahweh, it doesn't pertain to them. All right. It says... For they, the nation of Israel, went and served other gods. See, when our people wanted to fit in and be like the heathen, you know, keeping the customs of the heathen, believing in on the philosophies of the heathen. Even today, you got a lot of these different um, philosophies and religions 
that they'll mix the Bible with like other philosophies like Gnosticism, so forth and so on, which I got another video after this on um, prepare concerning that Ethiopian Bible, because that's that's absolute BS. All right. So our people went and served the other gods, gods of the heathen nations. Right. It says and worshiped them, gods whom they knew not and whom he, the heavenly father, Yahweh, had not given unto them, the Israelites. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against this land to bring upon it all the curses that are written in this book. What curses? Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. All right. You can't escape this. You think this is just an American thing? No, this is a worldwide thing that's on the sea line of Jacob. That's why our people catch hell. Right. It says, and the Lord rooted them out of their land in anger and in wrath and in great indignation. Indignation is righteous anger because we was warned multiple times. All right. It says, and cast them into another land as it is this day. Where we at? Where's the main bulk of the Israelites today? Babylon the Great, which is America. But as a nation, our people are scattered. All right. Let's get this. This is on Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 45. It says, Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. Because it's, it's letting you know why these curses are upon us, right? It says, Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God, Yahweh our God, right? To keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. Now, it doesn't literally mean forever. It means until Yahabashai comes back to deliver the elect of the nation of Israel. Because ultimately, under the new covenant, all Israel is going to be forgiven. When you read Hebrews, the eighth chapter. All right. But salvation is strictly for the elect of the nation of Israel. All right. So that's it with that. Let's keep it going. This is on um, Matthew 24 and 29 on down. And this is dealing with the glorious return of Yahabashai. He's coming back with power and great glory, right? Immediately after the tribulation, Matthew 24, 29, of those days shall the sun be darkened. And this is what's getting ready to happen. There's going to be a solar eclipse tomorrow, right? It says, um, and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. All these world leaders, they're afraid, right? You got all these miraculous events happening in the heavens, meaning the skies, right? You got comets falling. You got solar eclipses, you know, lunar eclipses, blood moons. I think they said on um, April 23rd is going to be a pink moon or some, something like that, all right? You got different so-called UFO sightings, right? It says... And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, referring to Yahabashai coming back with the clouds of heaven. Matter of fact, let me put the, on the strongs on. Right? Matthew 24 and 30 again. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven. When you go into this word clouds, the word there is nephale, right, in the Greek. And it says a cloud, use of the cloud, which led the Israelites, meaning it was a moving vehicle, which led the Israelites in the wilderness, which was a chariot, a so-called UFO, which are the chariots of Israel. All right. The chariots of our salvation, the way that Yahweh is returning back along with Michael, the archangel and the host of angels, meaning the army of angels to what? Take down the Edomites, the so-called white man in Selah. That's what the war in heaven is about. This is what they are talking about when they refer to an alien invasion, right? So it says, coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect, right? From the four winds, north, south, east, and west, and from one end of heaven to the other. So when Yahweh returns back, He's coming back to establish the kingdom of heaven. But before that takes place, he has to deliver the elect of the nation of Israel. All right. From the nuclear destruction, because at the same time that the nuclear missiles are shot off, the elect simultaneously all around the world is going to be beamed up. All right. 
into the so-called UFOs. Here's the proof. Uh, 1 Peter 4 and 18. It says, And if the righteous scarcely be safe, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? All right? Right when the missiles are shot off, you know, we're going to see the missiles coming. And some of us, you know, we're going to uh, hear the noise of the nuclear missile cutting through the air. And we're going to be like, damn, you know, please, you know, you know, deliver me, deliver me, deliver me. And right in the twinkling of an eye, as fast as you can blink, even before that, you're going to be translated up into the so-called UFO and change. All right. Into an um, immortal body, a spiritual body. All right. So we're going to have to be saved quick because there's going to be a lot of missiles that's going to be shot on this place. That's Bible prophecy. That's not nothing I came up with. This is on uh, First uh, Corinthians 15 and 52. It says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, meaning as fast as you blink at the last trump. The last trump is what? When your hover shower returns back, but ultimately when the missiles are shot off as well. Because that's going to be happening at the same time. Right before the destruction happens, the elect is going to uh, receive salvation. All right? It says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. The dead is referring to who? The dead elect of the nation of Israel. I'll give you some examples like um, Abba Bivens, King Masha, right? Um, high priest, Elder Yaquab, and these are men that the apostles taught us about. All right. When the Lord put the spirit of life, you know, back to um, our forefathers, it first began with Abba Bivens in his lifetime, which if you could receive it pursuant to Malachi, the fourth chapter, you know, that's um, John the Baptist in the reincarnation. All right. But, um, you know, Abba Bivens, King Marshall, um, Elder High Priest, Yaquab, and anybody else that believed in Yahweh Bashim El Shai and died with the faith. Right. It says shall be raised incorruptible. How are they going to be raised incorruptible? By being beamed up into a so-called UFO. And you're going to be changed. You're not going to be in these earthly terrestrial bodies. All right? It says, and we shall be changed into a nice glorious state. We're going to be put in bodies that can keep the law, statutes, and commandments perfectly. We're going to receive immortality once we're in those bodies. That's why the kingdom of heaven is going to be everlasting, because the people that's ruling in the kingdom of heaven are immortal. All right. Let's keep it going. Uh, Revelation 8 and 6. It says, and this is concerning the um, destruction. It says, and the seven angels, which had seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, and there was followed hail and fire mingled with blood and the missiles, and they were cast upon the earth. And the third part of the trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. And the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain, burning with fire, was cast into the sea. And the third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died. And the third part of the ships was destroyed, which, you know, is referring to Esau, Edom, the people that's going to be destroyed here within America, Right. The surrounding waters around Babylon the Great is going to dry up. You're going to have different desert creatures come here because this place is going to become a desert pursuant to uh, Revelation 18 and 2. All right. It says, um, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. It says, and the third angel sounded and there fell a great star from heaven, missiles burning as it were a lamp. Because when you look at the missiles in the air, it's, it lights up in the front. Right. It says, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became warm, Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. All right. So that's what's going to happen. All you unfaithful Israelites, you know, two thirds of the nation of Israel, you're going to be destroyed here in Babylon the Great, which is America. All right. But just because the destruction is prophesied to happen here, you don't need to flee Babylon because these curses is going to come upon you. If you are a part of the elect of the nation of Israel, you're going to receive salvation. All right. This is on Revelation 18 and 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. Who's the Lord's people? The sea line that he made the covenants with, which is who? The nation of Israel, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, but more importantly, the elect. 
It says that ye be not partakers of her sins, referring to Babylon the Great. Because how was this place established? All right, it was established through the rape, robbery, and murder of the children of Israel. We established America in rigor, right? It was a bitter captivity. This is a bitter land. This this place is absolute and complete hell. All right, Westernization, the democracy. I mean, everything is just absolute hell here. All right. It says that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. And what's the plague? Pursuant to um, Zechariah 14 and 12, the nuclear missiles. I'm going to end it with this. Isaiah 26 and 20. It says, come my people into thou into thy chambers. Referring to what? Being beamed up into the so-called UFOs. And shut the doors about thee. Because we're going to be beamed up from the bottom. And then, you know, it's going to um, close up. And we're going to be in the ships for a certain period of time. All right. Until the destruction finishes. It says, and shut the doors about thee, hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. And that's going into what I just explained. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place, you know, from the heavens, because he was sitting on the right hand of the Father, right? To punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. Iniquity is sin upon sin. The earth also shall disclose her blood, and they shall no more cover her slain. So when Yahabashah comes back, he's coming back with a sword. He's coming back to take these Edomites out of rulership. All right. He's, he's coming to punish the wicked. So Lord willing, he was edified by the lesson. Shalom.